you already heard my introduction that I am an educationist and an Indian classical dancer. No, I am not going to be dancing, neither I am going to preach or teach you all. I am simply going to share. So when you are trained to be a classical dancer or in fact even in education, we are always taught to follow. So like a good student, I also religiously followed the syllabus, learnt various you know, uh, items in dance which were in praise of the gods and the goddesses. Even the story narration distinctively defined the good and the bad characters. We see that in education also where we are always taught to look at the right and the wrong. Over time, we then tend to choose to look at the stories in a very limited perception. And we kind of jump to the conclusion of defining the characters and tag them into being good or bad. Isn't it? So when you do that, it's, it's because only you have been taught the pattern of thinking uh, and you kind of become that person who thinks very narrowly on that part. So when you do that, you, you know, uh, still, there are so many in the crowd, but a few are exceptions. And these ex exceptions kind of break the rule. Even a child or for that matter any youth will always have loads of question until and unless they don't feel convinced. The whys are so frequent because they want to be kind of satisfied with the answers. That was again obvious with the new age artists around me who also wanted to break through the rustic you know, uh, traditions of the societal conditioning. And that was evident through their way they represented the same old stories with a different perspective. That kind of inspired me. And I was curious to challenge myself of my existing beliefs. We all have heard of the great epic Rama. I was also introduced to the story. Uh, it was familiarized to me by my elders and also known as per what has been accepted largely around. So I was very intrigued with this character, you know, Ravan. Till then he was introduced to me as the only and the greatest, you know, villain of all times. But when I was searching on the epic, I was surprised to explore so many different interpretations of this very character, Ravan. There were so many interpretations that you just feel who Ravan is all about. When you look at Ravan in the Indian context, even today, what comes to our mind is the ten-headed sketch. Each head representing only a negative aspect of him. Emphasizing all the antagonist characteristics of Ravana and simply defining him to be bad. Simply bad. So when, you know, uh, even he is worshipped by his people and has been worshipped extensively in Sri Lanka for all the prosperity and the security that he brought in for his people. He was also known for the great wisdom and knowledge that he had. All his people under his rule were very happy. Now when you look at these positive associations with Ravan, you kind of stop and wonder, why does then our interpretation only limit to that ten-headed evil version of his? Is Ravan only a mystic villain? Or is he something more? Is he a human or mortal? So that kind of encouraged me to do a lot of research and to my shock, I heard that in Jainism, Ravan is the future Tirthankar, the savior and the sacred teacher, spiritual teacher of the righteous path. When you look at all these qualities that he possesses, you kind of start understanding him better and think whether he was really only a villain or was he something more. Now, before I get further about talking about Ravan, let me uh, introduce you to the epic Ramayana once again. I'll introduce the story in a nutshell. This story is of four brothers, sons of the great King Dashrath of Ayodhya, Queen Kaiti, Ram, Sita, Hanuman and Ravan. The four brothers were born of the fire sacrifice that was conducted by their father, King Dashrat. Mm -hmm. Things take a turn when all the four brothers get married and Ravana is supposed to be correlated 
as the king of Ayodhya. That's when Queen Taika is instigated by others and she then starts desiring to see her own son on the throne. So Queen Taika, who is the second and the dearest wife of the king, demands that her son Bharat should be made the king and Ram should be sent for 14 years in exile. So Ram, Sita and Lakshman are on their journey. That is when they encounter with Shurpinaka. Shurpinaka who is in the forest then, when Ram, Sita and Lakshman are continuing with their exile, you know, which their mother, Queen Kaiki, had demanded for, she accidentally met Ram and felt attracted to him. So she asked Ram to marry him, her, and but Ram, being Ram, sends her to Lakshman. And Lakshman also kind of rejects her proposal. Now just imagine, think for a while, that if two proposals in a row are rejected, am I not going to get angry? We are going to get, right? So with that anger, Shripanaka thinks, and she thought that if she would kill Sita, that's when Ram would be available to marry her. But in the bargain, Lakshman defends and cuts her nose. Again, Shripanaka gets even wilder, angrier, and she approaches her brother Ravan to take revenge from Lakshman. In response, Ravan also attacks Sita to Lanka. So when Ram and Lakshman are in search of Sita, that's when they meet Hanuman, whose devotion towards Ram is so much that it helps Ram to conquer Ravan and get Sita back. This is in nutshell the story of Ramayana. Now, when I was researching about Ravan, I was looking at the personality through his upbringing and his relationships. When we do that, we kind of try to understand a person much better, right? So the first facet that I would be talking of Ravan's personality is his dedication. He had great you know, regards for Lord Shiva and he used to worship Lord Shiva extensively. He in fact dedicated 10,000 years of his life to meditate and please Lord Shiva. Now when we, when we hear that, we kind of feel great about him. But let's understand there is also a hidden agenda that he had. He also wanted to acquire the invincible boon. As a king, when you look at Ravan, you see a different side, a greedier and more power-hungry side of him. And Ravan was a character where he always wanted to acquire more. But simply because as a son of a demon mother, he was very at early age exposed to the luxuries and pleasures of life. So the magnanimity, the desire for wealth, prosperity and might came to him from there. Even though he was a very you know, uh, power hungry king, he was also a good king and he showed strong qualities of leadership. When Lord Vishnu actually you know, kind of expelled all the Rakshas from Lanka, it was Ravan who actually won over Lanka and reinstated his people, giving them that pride and sense of belonging to their own land. In return, his people worshipped him and held him at high regards and celebrated his rule. We also see Ravan in a different context in terms of family values. His father, who was a great Rishi, imparted him the knowledge of the great Vedas, the Indian scriptures. From where he felt motivated and he held family values at a high level. In all that he did. And that was evident because he was so dedicatedly connected and worshipped Lord Shiva throughout his life. As a protective brother, Ravan has been very caring about his siblings, be it Shurpanaka or Vibhishan. In Shurpanaka's episode, we have already heard that you know she pleaded him to take revenge and emotions took over Ravan's mind and he also kind of felt hurt in terms of his pride so he strategizes and abducts Sita only to avenge what treatment Lakshman had done to his sister. When we look at his younger brother Vibhishan who expresses his desire, his desire to kind of leave Lanka and join Ram, Ravan allows him to go. Knowing that, Vibhishan knew all Ravan's strengths and weaknesses. Now again, he gets swayed away with the emotions and he does not even 
think for a while about his kingdom, his people, for that matter his own life. In the end of the fight, the great fight of Ramayana, we also see a different quality of Ra uh, Ravan and what he deemed important in his life. You know, when all his you know, great warriors died and he was left alone, the only saviour was a fire sacrifice. If he would conduct the fire sacrifice, he would be able to win the fight and live. But then he did not go for it. Instead of choosing to save his own life, he chose to save life of his wife Mandodari by leaving the fire sacrifice halfway. And here again we see the deep love that the husband had towards his wife and the desire to give her the feel of protection. There are many you know, situations where uh, Ravan kind of reflects his pride and insecurity. Ravan's response to things was sometimes driven by love and sometimes by his you know, uh, own sense of vengeance. He at times exuded strength and confidence but sometimes he was also kind of succumbed to his own weaknesses and his own defeat. There I remember a story where Ravan actually, you know, his self-esteem took a blow uh, when he felt insecure when he experienced failure. He felt ashamed when he lost the battle with Bali, the monkey king of Kishkinda. Now when you look at these aspects, you wonder really that, you know, he, was he very different from us? Was he? Let's think of that. So if we choose to call somebody as bad, I think we need to first ask ourselves, what is the definition of bad? Is it about certain qualities that kind of we define as antagonist qualities that allow us to label someone as bad? Is it that we label the person or is it our perception of some of their qualities? It's very easy to call somebody bad, antagonist, villain. But then you need to pause yourself a little and think over. Why do we do that? What is the reason behind it? Does it really actually help us understand the person better? You know, it's, it's always... We are always kind of influenced by the old pattern of thinking that has been passed down to us and it will still continue to exist throughout our lives. It will kind of taint our perception until and unless we choose to use the fresh lenses for ourselves. If we do so, we kind of may realize that a bad character is not that really bad. It is simply our mind that labels someone who is different from us. Thank you.